Hey guys, I'm gonna be deploying our Slack clone to EC2 instance on Amazon Web Services, and it's gonna look very similar to what I did with Vulture, so feel free to skip this if you're not interested, and I'll just put in the link below the uh, permanent link to this so you can come check it out if you'd like to. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have a public link up, and I'll just leave it up for pretty much as long as I can. So yeah, let's dig into this. So first I already set up my EC2 instance and here is the URL for it. And this is the uh, env production file for our client. So this is just me setting the URL. And again, notice I didn't put HTTP in front of that. I just put the URL to the EC2 instance. So I am just gonna rebuild our client. So npm run build and let that run in the background. So now that I have the URL uh, that's going to be permanent for our EC2 instance, we also need to update um, this message where we set the server URL. So for us, we need to go into Docker Compose and uh, just set the server URL. And here we need to set HTTP in front. Oops, if I go into message, because we do that for localhost too. And we don't need to rebuild our server because we're just putting this environment variable in Docker Compose. So that's all the code changes we need to make. I already have my EC2 instance set up. So all I'm gonna do is SSH into it and then uh, set up Docker and then move Docker Compose over and configure everything. So I'm just going to do SSH. And if you don't know how to SSH into EC2, here's how. You have to download a key, so you do dash i and then you point the um, where your key is. So here's where my key is located. And then I, uh, you, the default user is Ubuntu, assuming you create an Ubuntu instance, which is what I did, which you can create if you're using the free tier, which is what I'm doing. And then you just put the IP address for your machine. Um, and if you put the right credentials, you can get in. Okay, so I'm gonna follow the same instructions. Oh, and actually, I wanna do one thing before we install Docker. Um, actually, so I wanna talk about saving the domain name with Surge, but actually we'll hit this when we actually deploy. Well, let's see. Oops, is our front end ready to deploy? It is. So let's type Surge and deploy it real quick. Um, I'm gonna set the build, oops. So I wanna set the project path to, I think it's called build, yep, build. And, okay, over hearth surge, copy that. So this is gonna be the URL that I wanna save. So you notice with surge, it gives me a new URL every single time. I wanna create a permanent link. So I'm just gonna add a CNAME file and paste that in there. And I want the CNAME file to be in the build because I believe that's what they're gonna look for the CNAME. So now it knows this is the URL. So this will be the URL for our website that we'll always go to. Okay, yeah. so now let's do Docker. And I figured it tells us not to use this for production, but I figured let's try this convenient script, see how it works, why not? So I'm gonna copy this curl to download it. And I don't know if it went, it didn't even see a loading bar. All right, looks like we got it. Go ahead and run it. We'll let that do its thing. And then when that's done, we'll just install Docker Compose over here using the same method we used last time change mod it and then I'm just going to okay, minimize that docker compose and this guy my site template we're going to copy over here all right let's copy this so we're going to set our user and our user is Ubuntu. So now we can run commands at will and ID copy this. Oh, we already have that actually. It's this one I want to copy. 
So grab the script, copy you, and I should run docker hello world to make sure that's working too. Run hello world. Okay, got permission denied. I did just change the user group here. So I should be able to run docker, run hello world without having to run. Oh, looks like we needed to use sudo. Run hello world. So this command just did not work. Add sudo add user Ubuntu. And I did not misspell it. Let's just try running again. Um, that's odd. Not sure what I'm doing wrong. Maybe because it doesn't like this user. I'm not going to worry about it for now. I'm just going to continue on. Not sure why it won't let us add this user to the user group for Docker. But uh, we got Docker Compose. We're now just going to change mod it. And let's grab the version. Good. So Docker Compose up for example good can't find the config file so I'm just going to exit and we're going to SSH and change that and we're going to do a dash I still and actually I guess we should do put our thingy here I don't know where I should put the flag we'll see so here I'm going to get compose whoops Docker Compose, I misspelled that. Docker Compose. Uh, okay, so this is just bouncing to the end. My autocomplete is not working. I kept trying to autocomplete twice. Docker Compose and then my site's template. So I'm just uh, SS or just copying those over to the home directory. So now SSHN ls and we can remove git docker we don't need that anymore and I'm just gonna run docker compose up and that worked nicely so now we should be able to go to this website and it should just work assuming we got everything configured correctly. And once I do get this working, I'm going to cancel out of Docker Compose and just have it run in the background. I'm actually kind of curious. Um, maybe we'll do some performance testing on this because I'm curious how many users can use this site at once and uh, how much memory and stuff it uses. It'd be some interesting uh, things for us to uh, test out. Okay, so it looks like stuff is starting up now. We pull all our images. So let's switch over, open up Overhearth. Oh, you know what? This is gonna break every single time. And that's because we didn't rename index HTML to 200.html. So what I'm going to do is in my package.json, after I run build, um, I think it's semicolon for me. I, I don't know if it's semicolon or ampersand for this. I'm going to run, you know, let's test it real quick so I don't take this whole time. I'm going to say echo hi and echo by npm run build okay so semicolon works so after this builds I'm just going to move dot slash ooh I don't know what the we'll see if dot slash works build slash index html I'm just going to rename it to build slash 200 dot build 
yeah, 200 HTML. That way I don't have to do this every single time. I don't know if that's gonna work. Next time we'll run it, we'll see. Right now I'm just gonna do that and say search. And this should grab build. Awesome, it remembered the domain. And actually we need to register. Bob, Bob at Bob.com, Bob, and let's actually just use the same. And submit looks like it might have broke. Okay, so we did get a network timeout. Failed to fetch. Um, let's check over here. Okay, so we didn't get a connection. I'm guessing it's because I don't have my EC2 instance set up that's uh, open to the world. And the way I can confirm whether that is correct is I'm just going to try going to it and see. And I think it is not open to the world because it's still spinning. It'd connect right away if it was open to the world. Yeah, it's not. Okay, so I think I just have to go set a change to EC2 instance setting. So I'm going to pause it real quick and log in and change that. Okay, the problem was with me not allowing anyone to access HTTP in my security group. So here's the security group that I have on my AWS instance or my EC2 instance. And if I just come to inbound, I can edit. And I added these two right here. All I have to do is add new rule, HTTP, and then anywhere. And then it'll add those two for you automatically. And now when I come over here, I can access slash GraphQL. We hit Nginx and we hit our express server. So now I'm going to try to re-log in. And sweet, we're able to register. Bob at Bob.com. Paste that guy in. Create a team. Not now. Team one. Submit. Hello. So cool, I can see my message. I wanna make sure I can drag images. And doesn't look like images did anything. I'm gonna try just clicking the button to add. So, Timo. Okay, so this is an interesting error. Slash GraphQL, bad gateway, failed to load. Origin is not allowed, therefore it cannot allow it. Ah, oh, that makes sense. So I'm guessing it's because of our core settings, which is gonna be in our index of the server. Now we are allowing everyone. But we can make another one here. I guess we can say if process.env. I guess we want to do production and development. So node env is equal to production. Then we only want to allow this surge URL. So let's copy you. Paste that in, 
and then we're going to say else. And then for development, we'll just say cores everyone. Now, I don't know whether I'm supposed to put HTTP in front of this or if it's just the domain. I'm thinking it's just the domain. So I'm going to try this and see. And we can tab you over too. And there you go. Now, I'm just going to uh, build this and repush it and see if it works. Okay, so I just tried to get cores working for a good half an hour and I just could not get it to work. And the reason why is because we're not having a cores problem. If I had only read the log, I would have told me there was a permission denied. But for whatever reason, the error message there told me it was cores. So leaving cores like this is just fine. What the problem ended up being was files permissions was not opened up enough so it couldn't access it. So I just did sudo change mod 777 on files and files is if you remember that's just where we're holding uploads so we weren't able to basically write to that folder. So but after doing that I can docker compose up and I'm just going to go ahead and run it in the background because uh, I know it's going to work now. As you can see I already uploaded it to somebody. Um, refresh him and let's try uh, uploading Timo. Nice, so now we see both Timos. So we are officially working now and we are live. Come give this a try. Come on over to Avert Health, create a team, register an account, and start chatting. So we are live running a Docker EC2 off of EC2. Uh, we're using GraphQL and we got this running surge. Um, next thing I want to do is twofold things. I want to first, since this is live now, there's a few queries that are f quite unoptimized. So I think I'm going to make another data loader video just so we don't use a ton of database resources and just CPU resources on our EC2 instance since it is live now. Um, and then next I want to try to set up HTTPS. Um, and see how easy that is to get set up. But that is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.